My book, Capital Characters of Old Cheyenne, features some of the interesting people in Cheyenne's history. And I focused on the era from the Transcontinental Railroad, uh, the building of that from 1860s into the early 1900s and a little bit beyond that. But I wanted to show a cross section of some of the interesting people who were here and some of the things that they did. I think there are many misconceptions about Wyoming's history and that's what makes it fun to be a historian in Wyoming. I think they don't realize uh, how significant Wyoming is in the nation's history and that uh, they don't realize that women had the right to vote here in territorial days and that was quite controversial and they don't realize how influential Wyoming can be and people from Wyoming aren't, aren't just Old West type people. You meet some of those people, which is fine, and they're very intelligent and smart, but there were also some um, political influences that Wyoming made and Wyoming people made and are still making. We're standing in front of the Wyoming State Capitol, which is an important building in the state's history, of course. But also, it has a significance because Estelle Real was the first woman elected to a state office in the nation. She became Wyoming's superintendent of public instruction. This occurred in 1894. And even though it was only about four years after Wyoming, the equality state became a state, uh, she felt that women should not hold the governorship, that women should be happy with the right to vote and equal pay. She was a proponent of that. But she also had another significance in 1898 President William McKinley appointed her as the first female superintendent of Indian schools, and that was a very important position in that era. She wrote a textbook, a course of study for Indian schools, and she traveled about 65,000 miles during her first three years in office, and she traveled by buckboard on horseback, not at all like the travel we consider today. So she was an amazing person that way. Also. She was kind of quirky and she loved to dress up. So when she attended President McKinley's inaugural, she wore a $1,000 Parisian gown and a $50 hat. She always loved fancy hats. And to contrast the amount of money that cost, her salary as Wyoming Superintendent of Public Instruction was about $2,000. We're standing in front of the Wyoming Supreme Court building, it used to be the State Library building, it no longer is. It's significant in Wyoming's history, and of course, and it has an interesting person uh, involved with it. His name was Willis Vandeventer. He was an attorney, powerful attorney in Wyoming in the 1884-1897 era. He's significant in the state's history because he was also uh, the person, one of the people who defended the cattlemen in the Johnson County War incident of 1892. And he was a Supreme Court Justice for Wyoming. And later in 1910, he was appointed to the United States Supreme Court. And he was a justice there. He served from 1910 to 1932. And he was the first, and I think the only, Supreme Court Justice from the state of Wyoming. Nathaniel Robertson was a carriage maker here in Cheyenne and he originally came from Aberdeen, Scotland and he was one of the finest, he billed himself as one of the finest carriage and buggy makers and wagon makers in the area and in 1882 he partnered with George Kaufman and they expanded into farm equipment also. One of the carriages that Nathaniel Robertson built was for Alexander Swan of the Swan Land and Cattle Company and that was a large uh, ranching concern here in this area. And he built a Stanhope trap. He also built phaetons. And it speaks to the elegance of the era. This was the way that people traveled more and they had buggies and carriages and, and they had to make sure that their wheels were properly attached. And it just was an elegant uh, form, form of travel. The first book that I wrote, Dreamers and Schemers, I was new to Carbon County and I wanted to learn more about that county's history. So I followed that same pattern. I wanted to learn more about Cheyenne and the people here. I grew up in western Nebraska, just a stone's throw from the Wyoming border here. And I've always been fascinated with uh, Cheyenne and the West and probably that old cowgirl misconception of, of uh, the frontier people. But they're very nice, they're very genuine, and many are very intelligent and quite highly educated. And that's 
true in history. And I think people, that's a misconception people might have about Wyoming. To me, the people make the history of a place. And the people were so fascinating to me. And they made significant contributions to Wyoming as a territory and as a state.